exercising, we can now look to take some further readings. We're going to go back to um, our cardiovascular system and really have a look at what our heart does during exercise. And to do that, we can use a device like this called a heart rate monitor. There are two parts, as you can see. We have a wristwatch, which has a receiver inside, and a chest strap, which has a transmitter. On the back of the chest strap, you can see there are two electrodes, one on either side. You have an electrode here and an electrode here. This chest strap is designed to be placed against the skin underneath your top and it should be positioned over your sternum, just below the pectoral muscle. So to do that, I'll place it under my top Clip the belt on around the side and then position the chest strap so that it is roughly around the same height as my sternum, just below the pectoral muscles. The two electrodes then are in contact with the skin. Now it can be quite difficult to achieve a good connection between the electrodes and your skin depending on different body shape and size. If you do experience this, a useful hint is to run the transmitter strap underneath a tap so that you wet the back of the electrodes. Um, after exercising as well, as your body temperature raises and you produce sweat, this connection will become better. So you may get interference early on, it probably will settle down over time. But initially, wet the back of the strap with water and that should solve your problems. Next step then is to look at the heart rate monitor itself, the wristwatch. With the chest strap in position, all we need to do is press the red button as such, and it will take five seconds to pick up the signal, and then it will display a figure at the bottom of the watch. Now this figure is the amount of times per minute your heart is beating. So in this case, we can see it 74. Once it picks up a signal, it's usually quite reliable or lock-in. Sometimes you have difficulties getting that signal in the first place. So now we have a signal, I'm going to attach the watch to my wrist. As such, and I'm free to exercise on the bike whilst the watch is measuring my heart rate. One thing to note is that if the watch is more than a metre or a metre and a half away from the chest strap, it may lose signal. But on your wrist, it shouldn't be any problem at all. Okay, when we start exercising, we'll notice a change in the heart rate. However, if you want to record that, all we have to do is press the red button again, and it will start a stopwatch and store the heart rate in the memory of this watch. So what I'm going to do is start pedalling at 60 revs per minute, as we saw earlier, and start recording my heart rate. So I'll start pedalling at the same time at the beat, stopwatch has started. I've got a heart rate of 72 at the moment. When starting the test, simply start pedalling with an empty cradle. It's important to note that the cradle itself weighs one kilogram. So the first minute of exercise is under one kilogram resistance purely from the cradle at a pedaling speed of 60 revs per minute. So that gives me my power output of 60 watts. Now at the end of each minute, I'm going to add a one kilo weight onto the cradle, which is going to add an extra 60 watts to my power output. Also at the end of each of those minutes, I can record my heart rate. So initially, we have a heart rate of 88 with a power output of 60 watts. So at the end of the minute, power output has now gone up to 120 watts. Now this test will continue on until the participant fatigues. So we'll not be able to push him or herself any further and we'll be exhausted. Obviously this kind of test is only suitable for 
fit people who are used to this kind of effort. And you would always complete a pre-health test questionnaire and you would ask for your participants' consent. A test such as this could be very dangerous for a different type of population. For example, a cardiac rehabilitation patient who would obviously only need to exercise at very low intensities. Okay, so we're now coming up to the next stage. So I'm going to add another weight. So you have a power output of 180 watts and a heart rate of 103 beats per minute. As this test goes on, you would expect heart rate to rise as the exercise intensity rises. A maximum heart rate can be estimated using the formula 220 minus your age. This will give you a rough indication. So in my case, 220 minus 30, you'd be looking at around about 190. However, readings will vary outside of this by perhaps plus or minus 10 beats, maybe even more. So the recording you'll get in this experiment would be a true reflection of your actual maximum heart rate. So coming up to the next stage, to load another kilo. We have a power output of 240 watts, a heart rate of 117. As you can see, I'm now in the latter stages of the test. Nine kilos loading on the front, which is a power output of 480 watts. And my heart rate is 172. And that is quite close to my maximum. Completing the exercise, we can then download the wristwatch into the computer. There's an infrared port from the computer, and I can set it to connect, and the computer will then search for the heart rate monitor. The watch is now downloading into the computer through the infrared port, as we can see the exercise information will be uploaded into the computer's database. This can set take some time and then all we've got to do is click on save and close. That information is then in the computer and we can go to our calendar and find the exercise. And there we have a graph of heart rate against time. So we had zero time here, a low heart rate initially. As time's gone on, up to around about eight minutes or so, we can see that heart rate has steadily increased as the exercise intensity increased. And we can see a peak heart rate there. That watch will take a reading every five seconds throughout the exercise. And it's a very useful tool for training.